Hey there, what's up? Greetings, salutations, all that good stuff. Tim Warner here. I've been on quite a tear lately putting up these YouTube videos. I figure might as well capitalize on momentum. I've been wanting to teach you about Azure Bastion for a while, so now is as good a time as any. I'm going to teach you from front to back what Azure Bastion is and how to use it. First of all, take a look at the diagram that's on your screen now from the Azure Architecture Center. This is a typical virtual network with a three-tier web application, and I want you to pay particular attention to the management subnet. There's the question. We don't want to put public IP addresses on our virtual machines in general. We don't want to expose them to the internet for obvious security reasons. So a common design pattern is to use what's called a bastion host or a jump box, which is a specially configured virtual machine that you place in your virtual network, normally on its own subnet protected by its own network security group. And you do generally give a public IP address to the jump box. You alternatively could go through a site-to-site -site or point-to-site -site VPN, but that's another discussion for another time. The issue here, of course, is you're still exposing an internal virtual machine directly to the internet. And it's responsible, it's actually your responsibility, I should say, to make sure that you're constraining traffic properly. Microsoft over the past year has been working really hard to abstract a number of their services and put them together in a way that it's easier to use. Because networking is really a heavy lift for most IT people. Let's face it, it's a totally separate skill set, and that's before you even get to the software-defined networking in the Azure cloud. So what we have in public preview as of this recording in July 2019 is a new platform-as-a-service offering called Azure Bastion. And the idea here is that it simplifies the jump box or the bastion host to allow you secure administrative access into your virtual machines in an Azure VNet. Now take a look at what's happening here. You've got Joe or Jane Administrator coming from over the public internet using SSL TLS, which is TCP 443 typical firewall friendly protocol. They're coming into the virtual network on a public IP that's associated with your bastion host which under the hood, I presume, is some kind of virtual machine, but it is a platform-as-a-service offering, so Microsoft completely abstracts that. You notice that in this diagram we have Gateway Manager. That, again, is a behind-the-curtain platform service. It reminds me a little bit, if you're familiar with remote desktop services and RD Gateway, there's a similar idea here because you're coming in through the portal on 443, and you're establishing an administrative connection, which is typically going to be remote desktop protocol using TCP 3389 or secure shell using TCP 22 into your Azure VMs. There's no agent required. There's no special NSG configuration that's required. There's no other software that you need. It's really a turnkey solution. It's pretty sweet. And from what I've seen in the documentation and in the Azure blogs, eventually Azure Bastion will support RDP and SSH clients. But as of now, in public preview, you have to go through the portal. So let's get into the configuration, shall we? The first thing you should know is that you have to come into this and create your Bastion host in one of the Azure Preview portals. I say one of because normally I would go to preview.portal.azure.com and I couldn't find the Bastion host. So the documentation has a short URL. It's aka.ms forward slash Bastion host. And that takes you into this preview portal, which actually has a separate configuration blade for Bastions, as you see here. Now, we want to make sure to set up the environment for the Bastion host before we configure it. So you need to make sure that your virtual network is all ready. Let me filter my virtual networks list here using my list view and focus just on my temp2 resource group in which I've created a Bastion VNet. Again, this is all public preview stuff, so it's not available in all regions. Check the documentation. Just do a search in the Azure Docs for Bastion and you'll get all of the information. But it's just available. The service is only available in a subset of Azure regions, and I'm using the South Central U.S. region, as you can see. Now, in that virtual network, this is just an ordinary garden variety VNet, but there's an important subnet definition in here. Similarly to how you need a gateway subnet when you're doing gateways, you need to create a special subnet called Azure Bastion Subnet and it has to be an empty subnet. That's where your appliance will go. Microsoft in their documentation recommends at least a slash 27 for your IP range. I did slash 24 just to make it easy to remember. Notice that there's no NSG right now. There's no delegation. It's just a naked subnet. I'll end this demo by teaching you how you can add an NSG to your Azure Bastion subnet. 
Also, just to show you what I've got going on quickly before we do our bastion, let me pop over to Network Watcher and let's go over to Topology and look up that resource group and virtual network one more time. And I just want you to see that my Bastion VNet 2 has another subnet called Production that has a Windows Server 2019 VM called WinServer. Notice that it does have a VNIC associated network security group. And we're going to see that that doesn't come into play when we're using Azure Bastion. Again, the idea is to get easy but secure administrative access to your VMs without having to expose your VM to the public internet directly at all. So let's come over to the Bastion's Blade. We can also go through Create a Resource, but I've decided to go this way. Let's click Add. I'll place this Bastion in my Temp2 resource group and give it a name and make sure that my region is compatible with the rest of my deployment. That's critical. And notice also you have to have your VNet already set to go. So I'm going to choose my Bastion VNet2. And notice that Azure Resource Manager detected the presence of that subnet. Note that at least as of public preview, you have to have that subnet already created yourself. You can't do it from the creation experience. Maybe that'll change in general availability. Notice also that we have to have a public IP address resource for the Bastion, and that comes in as standard SKU static assignment, and you can't change that. Let's go to Review and Create, make sure we pass validation, and then we'll click Create to deploy the Bastion host. Just by way of trivia, Bastion refers to a defensive structure on a castle wall. Think of a curtain wall around a castle, how you've got those promontories. The Bastion kind of pokes out, and it gives you a defensive position with a much wider field of fire than you'd have normally. Similarly, the idea of the jump box or the bastion host, you're poking it out to give it a wider field of view. That would be the analogy to Internet Exposed, but you're also keeping security top of mind. I also want to just remind you that use this bastion host only in a dev test environment because like all public preview features or just about all public preview features, this is not in scope for Azure support plans, nor is it SLA'd until it's generally available. While we're waiting for this deployment, I'll say in passing that there's another mechanism to create a Bastion host from a pre-existing virtual machine. I'm not going to cover that aspect in this tutorial, but once again, I want to lead you back to the Azure Bastion documentation at docs.microsoft.com. Excellent. Now that it's finished, let's go to the resource. Interestingly, the Azure Bastion resource itself is very empty. It's devoid of settings. As you can see here, there's not even a populated details area on the overview page. Remember, of course, that this is public preview, so it's unfinished. But yeah, I mean, there's access control IAM, so you can delegate administrative privilege to the Bastion host. There's a, on the overview page, notice that there's a nice lock feature where you can put a delete Azure Resource Manager resource lock to prevent the resource from being deleted accidentally. That's handy. Other than that, you have the underlying template definition under Settings Export Template, and I thought this was interesting. Let me expand the screen a little bit. There's not a whole lot to the resource definition, to be perfectly honest with you. Let me scroll up a little bit so you can see more of it. I mean, the DNS name is under bastion.azure.com, but there's really no indication of what this actually is. Is it a network virtual appliance virtual machine? Is it What exactly is it under the hood? It's sort of a mystery. You can see that we have a public IP and a subnet definition, but that's not anything particularly interesting. The biggest bit of information is this DNS name, which looks like bstguid.bastion.azure.com. Oh, well. The big question, of course, is how do we actually connect to our virtual machines now through the Azure Bastion? So if we come back to virtual machines, we can filter on the appropriate resource group and get rocking and rolling. But I just thought of something interesting before we do that, and that is let's come back to Network Watcher yet again, and let's take a look at the topology map for that virtual network. So let's go to Monitoring Topology. Let's select our resource group and our VNet. And even here, we've got a situation shrouded in mystery. Notice that the Azure Bastion subnet doesn't show anything else on it. Platform as a service, right? That's the idea. You've abstracted or Microsoft has abstracted away the underlying plumbing, and we're just left using the service as essentially a customer. 
All right, so here's our Win server. You can see notably that there's no public IP address associated with this VM, only a private IP address. There's no load balancer in front of it. It's just a protected virtual machine. So if we come into the overview page and we'll go to connect like we're accustomed to doing, now you can in fact enable just-in-time access in conjunction with Bastion Host, if we do onboard this virtual machine to just-in-time VM access, we would here click Request Access, and once the request is granted, then we would proceed to the next step. That next step is we go past RDP and SSH and go to the Bastion area, and we're prompted for our administrative username and password. If this is a Linux virtual machine, you can use SSH authentication as an alternative to password. But watch this. If we click Connect, it's going to open a new window or a new tab. Looks like it's trying to do a new window, and it looks like my Chromium Edge is blocking pop-ups. So let me override this to always allow pop-ups from this place. Click Connect again. There we go. Do we want to send text and images? Yes, we'll allow clipboard access. And it looks like I probably mistyped my credentials. So let me try that again. There we go. And it's taking us in. Let's wait for the desktop to load up. And here we are. We've got browser-based secure RDP access into that virtual machine. That is really convenient, isn't it? Look at this little chevron over on the left. You can, at this point in the preview, you can copy and paste clipboard contents between your host and the VM, but that's it. You can't drag and drop files, which is something I miss. But remember what I said at the beginning of this tutorial, that it is on the product team's roadmap to add support for the Microsoft Terminal Services client, let's say, that would allow us to drag and drop. But for now, we've got browser-based access. That's pretty cool. Now, as promised, I wanted to end with a bit on hardening the security even more by, for instance, adding a network security group to your Azure Bastion subnet. How would you do that? Well, there is some guidance on that from Microsoft. And let me come into my sample NSG and I'll finish here. For inbound security rules coming into the Bastion subnet from the internet, you'll want to create a rule that allows inbound traffic from selected service tags. There's a service tag called Gateway Manager. So you notice my rule 100 is allowing traffic in from the Azure Gateway Manager service tag. Let me move the source field over a bit. And you'll also want an inbound rule allowing the service tag Azure Cloud. So basically, you're enabling or making sure that traffic can come in into the Bastion host from the internet from the Azure fabric itself. Azure Cloud or all the Microsoft Azure public IP address ranges and Gateway Manager is specifically the Gateway Manager service that supports Bastion host. And then, of course, finally, you'll want to create a rule to allow TCP 443 for HTTPS traffic because that's what we're using for the underlying communications protocol. Now, as far as your outbound rules, I haven't customized anything here, but then you would just do your typical rules to ensure that traffic, management traffic, is allowed into your VMs only from the Bastion host subnet from there. All right. Well, this video was longer than I hoped, but we had a lot to cover. I hope you enjoyed learning about Azure Bastion. Thanks for hanging with me. I appreciate you. Take good care.